energy and power and I feel my heart is charged it's like you know feel much much better you know thank you my dear Aww. really you know so just entering the royal tomb at uh, Archaelton and this was the tomb that was originally built for Archaelton and his daughters um, but I suspect he was never here uh, or certainly never yeah. buried here well, the body's never been found, has it? Yeah. Well, they think they might have. They think they might have. I got a feeling that it's been taken. It's been taken elsewhere. Now, this was already used for one of his daughters. That's why in better condition than the others. Look at the orbs. Look at the orbs. They're like snow. Look at the energy in here. Yeah, you can see it. Is it not dust? No, it's not dust. Oh, 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 you no, can no, see no. the dust here. No, no, it's no, not no, dust no, no. See this energy? This is energy. You can feel it so it doesn't move mm -hmm. the dust. Because even when you walk, you can, you can, you can see, see it. it. You can see it even if you move the camera. This is light. These are light, light beings, light energy, spirit. Yeah. I told you guys this is really... It's been a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is extraordinary. Really Laurie, what are you feeling over there? Just the words. The energy, the energy is shifting and changing as you speak. Boys, what are you feeling? Empty? Yeah. What are you feeling in here? Um, it's different, something really amazing. Yeah, but I feel I like to be silent, I don't know why. Yeah, I know. It's I totally different than all the other signs. Yeah, I'm gonna go yeah. feel. This is murdered and um, we've had to release her soul to the light among others
used to be 14. This is the only place in Egypt, the only city in Egypt, which you got like a border still like that. Who would like to say I'm not like anybody else living outside this place. It's, this is... Yeah, totally unique. The, yeah, this is like... Is, uh, so it's the, the border stella for the city. It's one out of 14 years. Still many of them still exist, by the way. So this is not the only one. So Adam will give us a light. Huh? Look at the hand here. And uh, look at the bar as well. Don't look at the surface. Look at the bar. Okay, we're feeling many orbs. Lots of energy. So again, when we see those other ones that go straight down. Mm. So again, it gives you an idea of you know, this one's just kind of on a curve, so it's easier for us to get down. But all of them would have a the tombs buried really deep under the mm. the actual yeah. temple. These bits that we've been going into are just the doorway. Yeah, that's what I saw in the first one we went. Yeah. That there, yeah. there is even more. Yeah, yeah. so much more. Mm. We're just seeing the surface level. So we think it's an archaeological dig, right? People digging for um, artifacts. So here we are at Abydos. We've got the whole place to ourselves because we happen to be staying in the hotel on the doorstep, the, the house, house of, of life. life. And uh, we're gonna go in and take a look around and have a look at the Osirian and the flower of life, which is very exciting for our group because they haven't seen it before. Absolutely, and we're gonna hope to reconnect with Omseti, who we met the last time we were here, who was the extraordinary English woman who had visions and flashes of her past life and in her dream state, would have the pharaoh Seti that she'd been in love with when she'd had a past life here 
visit her and she had this extraordinary connection with him and it was in the very early 1900s and she just decided to move to Egypt. She had no money, she had no way of supporting herself, she, she lived in a, a basically a shed you know in the land somewhere and the Egyptian people just became very fond of her but her past life memories meant that she could actually remember specifically where things were so she was great help to the Egyptologists and to the government because she would just say oh well, well this is here you know just point out and they would dig and find everything she described so she became a bit of a, a legend and our last last trip here we found that there was a part of her that was stuck because she had vowed never to leave her lover mm. so we helped to release that part of her back to the light so now she's free to come and go and, and visit as, as she wishes so we're really hoping to reconnect with her today and it's really um She's really present with us, but all along we've had so many beings. We've had faces appearing in sun and in the clouds and everything, so we're really being guided again by, by the ancestors of this Absolutely. place. Uh, uh, the same with everywhere we go, it's just incredible. But to be here on the doorstep of it is amazing. And we, we only just saw, uh, went to visit and pay homage to Seti the First in the Cairo Museum just the other day. So it's wonderful to trace the lineages of yeah. these, these people and to get a sense of the history. So amazing, we're going to go inside. So I'm in Abydos and if you look up to the top column above me, you can see the image of a helicopter what looks like a helicopter, a submarine, and a spaceship. And I'm wondering if, well, the theory goes that, uh, you know, in the age of this technology, perhaps there will be a reawakening. Perhaps people will be remembering the, uh, the ancient language of the pharaohs, the ancient hieroglyphics, and the meaning of it. Originally used for Hedar. This is a burial of Gadwa's artist, so this we believe that yeah. this is a place where Gadwa's artist himself buried. Oh. So that's why they are so important. And the Osiris yeah. will not be only in Abydos, which is considered to be the place where the head of Osiris buried. Yeah. But you will see it in many other places because Osiris everywhere. Osiris is responsible for yeah. the underground. Yeah. And uh, he's responsible of the West and afterlife, and that's why he's so important to be everywhere. That's why we will see one of the famous Osiris as well in uh, in Giza. Next oh, we're to gonna, the Valley yeah, Temple. there's another one near the Valley yeah. Temple. Oh, yeah. Amazing. So there are so many of them. So, Syrian, and we're looking at the flower of life on the wall down here behind me. I'm going to zoom into so the flower of life. The flower of life right here on the wall. It's quite hard to see in this light, but it is there. And it looks like it's been laser cut into the wall. See this pillar? Uh huh. Not the first one, second one. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we think. There's no yeah, way there's that no that was done with that chisels or... They can't do it. They've tried, to, they've tried to recreate it and they can't. Oh. And it's in a really random place yeah. as well. It's not in a place that's... Um, it's also, it's very high up, so it's like the people who have been here would have been a lot taller than they are now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The same. And it also, because there's two of them, and they only... It, it's in the 2D representation, but it's actually a 3D image. It's meant to show it spherically. And it's also meant to show, it's like when you have the, the birth of a child and the conception takes place, yeah. the first sphere splits into two. So here we have the multiverse and it's like, then it splits into more and more and more and you've got 13 rounds in that, in one of those rounds, yeah. but then that whole round splits again. So it shows that the multiverse goes on and on and on and on and on. We're not just one universe, we're so many universes, universes within universes and Multiverses. realms within realms. It's, yeah. it's infinite. And the waters of the Osirian here are said to be very fertile. So if you're wanting to conceive a child, this is the place to come. This is the place to conceive. Yeah, they, they would bathe in, in these water. waters. <laughs> well, probably it wasn't green back in the day. <laughs> I believe that this area got like almost five of them. So there were five, five Osirians originally. Originally in the area, but this is a, no, it's still, it's still, they are still there. Oh, they're still there. Area, like but we, two kilometers oh, so they're further kilometers. away. So we can, uh, this is the closest this one is a, to Abydos. Well. We're just standing in Om 
Rossetti's room in Abydos, where she would have been, the woman who had past life memory of being a lover of Seti I here and ended up moving to Egypt and helping the Egyptologists. And last time, Laurie, last time we, uh, we did a big clearing on uh, this place, didn't we? We did. We did. And we can feel that now, but it's a very different energy. And we're just pretending to take some photos because yes. we're not allowed to film in here. <laughs> very different energy this time. Yeah, it feels much lighter. It feels much lighter. Just filmed a uh, a little um, a little amazing chanting and channeling session with the Hathors, and there were six of us and six of them, and then we filmed it on my camera, and it's come up as 66 of 66. Two twenty-two. Two twenty-two. Two twenty-two. We're about to go into Denver, and we're having amazing lunch. Two twenty-three. Two twenty-three. Yeah. We're just walking up the causeway to Denver, the home of Hattor. And I've brought with me some flowers and a reed to symbolise the masculine and feminine. So quite fitting, I think. I think. I'm just taking a sneaky video in my my room in Dendra. Where I feel very at home. Lamp. Money, money, money. Cause I'm happy, never long if you feel like happiness. 